Hi, I'm Fraser from Bike Rider magazine. This week I'm testing Kawasaki's Retro Cool W800. Now as you can see the W800 makes no pretensions of being a sports bike, it's clearly an old school parallel twin, very similar to not only the Triumph Bonneville but Kawasaki's own W1 and later W650. Now Kawasaki's W650 was the take on the classic parallel twin that was in production from 1999 to 2008. Now emission rules killed that one, what we have here is a 773cc parallel twin, it's fuel injected and it's got bevel gear driven cams which allow this beautifully shaped head here in fact the whole engine is a work of art as is the rest of the bike, the finish on it is just stunning Now unlike many bikes who have full plastic or full chrome parts should I say all the metal components on a W800 are in fact real metal the mud guards and these lovely steel laced rims 300mm disc at the front and a drum brake on the back admittedly these aren't the sharpest anchors out there but this isn't a sports bike they're more than adequate and up to the job for bringing this bike to a halt although I must say the rear drum brake is pretty useless Now as I was saying, everything's made of metal, tank, side covers, even the bit that covers the fuel injection unit here, even the switch gear is made of metal, it's not plastic like most motorcycles are these days. And I must say the finish is just fantastic on this bike, I particularly love the green paint, it works really well. The seat, well, it's nice and comfortable, it's relatively low, it's under 800 mil, so that appeals to a lot of riders. Maybe not someone as tall as me, it's a little bit on the small side. Now this engine, again, it's not going to set the world on fire. Kawasaki haven't given us any official power figures, but we're estimating it's somewhere around 50 horsepower. Now it weighs just over 200 kgs wet, so again, performance wise, it's not going to set the world on fire. But if you are coming back to biking, or if you don't need all that grunt, this could be the perfect steed for you. Now this metal tank has these lovely old school rubber pads to protect it on here but it's only 14 litres so it's not going to give you a huge range but the engine itself is reasonably low compression so it's quite frugal I'm estimating somewhere in the region of 5 litres per 100 kilometres so that's not too bad Now there's a lot of styling points on this that really work for me. I love these dual clocks. I really like this old school big old headlight on the front here. The saddle is comfortable. In fact the whole bike's very user friendly. It's by no means perfect however. Um, like most motorcycles there are one or two little niggles I have personally. Um, one of those is the fact that the suspension is nothing to write home about. Dual shocks on the back, 39mm forks on the front. With the pillion, it can be a little bit overwhelmed, it's non adjustable apart from preload on the back. The only other bugbear I really have is the big bracket holding on the rear light and um, indicators. Um, I think they could have done a better job there, it's really far too big and it detracts from the look of the whole bike. But other than that, I'm just being picky. So how much is this retro piece of kit? $16,995 is the retail price at the moment, which is probably a little bit more than the T100 Bonneville it competes against. I for one don't think that's an awful lot of money for a machine that's definitely different from the rest of the Japanese bikes out there. In fact you could say the W800 has one thing in common with the Triumph, and that they're both timeless looking motorcycles. <laughs>